Good evening and welcome in to WCU Esports. Tonight we have WCU Crimson Overwatch taking on University of Texas Rio Grande Valley, or Rio Grande Valley the UT RGV Axolotls. I'm JoJo's Mojo. And I'm Mountain Man. And welcome in. This could, from what we've seen so far, this could very well determine playoffs for WCU Crimson. These two teams neck and neck in the standings right down at the 8th, ninth place together. And, I mean, Crimson needs this victory to uh, not secure, but to give them the best possible shot at making playoffs this semester. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, should be an exciting one. Definitely a good matchup here from both sides. Kind of excited to see. We have uh, WCU starting out in blue. WCU Crimson is in blue. We have Nona, Zero, Kook. Moose Goose and Megusaka with, I mean, pretty much just a standard map or a standard composition for when they play Oasis, which we don't really see too frequently. For the most part, we've seen teams pick Li Zhang and WC more than happy to oblige with that one, but we'll see how they do on Oasis as no one's really gotten full control yet. It's been close. But no real blood has been picked off, or has been picked so far. As I say that, Nerf finds Nona, and UTRGV is going to get the first control of this map, as WCU's Loose Goose gets the revive on Nona. And I just looked over Zero, dangerously close to getting that Pulse Bomb. And there is going to be an Echo ult coming soon from UTRGV's side. And WC is starting to take this point about one third of the way there. Slowly picking them off, and it looks like they will cap it with UTRGV at 27%. And there will be a five player kill streak for WCU. Not a team kill, but very close to it. And with that, UTRGV going to be on their heels as we do see a tank switch coming from UTRGV. But other than that, most team, most of both of the teams staying the same. And it's going to be a big push from the Axolotls here to try and keep WCU as low in terms of point percent as possible. Megusaka and Ultra Cook finding, or both popping their ults, and Ultra finds the Kiriko and Soldier, Nona finding the Wrecking Ball. It's going to leave a DPS and a Mercy from UTRGV. Yeah, it was a good fight there from WCU, able to hold out, and they're getting up to 45%, coming close to 50% here. And WCU closing in on the 60% mark too, and it's going to be another big team fight of Two quick picks onto Western, and Western actually going to try and just get back as fast as they can, as it is up to, or as Loose Goose keeps, I believe that is, is Ultra Cook alive. Zero gets, just jumps off the edge, and WCU going to take a quick reset as they get to 65%. Yeah, just kind of grouping up as a team, they have plenty of time, so definitely no rush there. We do see a couple of DPS changes and one heal change on WCU side. We see Luzu switching over to Baptiste, Zero to Hanzo, and Cook over to Soldier. As there is the Baptiste ammo field coming out. And Nona gets picked off by the opposing Soldier. The team's now tied in terms of percentage, or just about tied. As Zero's gonna back off, back to the spawn. Trying to take out one or two of UTRGV. Yeah, we have UTRGV getting past 80% here, so getting pretty close to last fight territory here for the Mountaineers. Last fight territory, that's a phrase I haven't heard in quite a while. <laughs> is going to have to get on point here. Doesn't look like it's going to be too feasible though, and they will get take shut down. 
got up to 65%. Well, and we're working on just getting a couple of specifics figured out. Just some pregame issue, or not issues, but pregame discussion about spectators and voice chats. So, still working on getting a final answer as a whole. Sounds like we do have ours, though, and we're doing what we can to make sure we keep that as best as we can. I mean, also just going back to the game, though, Nona switching from Sigma over to Winston. Zero going back to Tracer, Cook going over to Reaper, Goose going to be Lucio, and Megu going to be Kiriko. And there with WCU getting the first two picks, so it looks like they're going to win this first battle and claim point. I mean, having that full roster change, I think, might have just been what WCU needed, as last time they were able to hold off for a decent while, but one team fight is what secured it in favor of UTRGV, so maybe a composition that could hold off with one or two falling from Western. We'll see another big team fight coming as UTRGV quickly gets on the point. Getting the pick on the two WCU healers, so Western going to try and back out and retreat here. And there goes Nona and Cook. So that's going to be three of Western taken out, and Zero and Luscu is just going to run away, get back, and regroup to find their team. So WCU getting up to 32% there on that hold. See how quickly they can reclaim that point. Well, and they get a quick pick onto that tank, and that Wrecking Ball tank is doing a lot of work for UTRGV. I'll t I'm just going to start saying the Axolotls. That's, axolotls. A, that's a mouthful. It is. A quick pick onto the Axolotls tank could change the course of this fight, but the tank now back in action. Going to actually ult on point. Nona does find the Kiriko, but Hammy on the Axolotl side gets three kills. Two with the ult, one on Loose Goose. Nerf's going to find Ultra and he's going to leave Megusaka alone. Yeah, the Axolotls will take that fight, going up to 50% now. Not entirely sure how the rest of this fight is going to play out, or the rest of this round is going to play out, and this is a best of five series, not a best of three, as I was about to say, being that we had two Smash games before this today. But for the moment, I am, right now it's looking like UTRGB really just trying to come out strong and hold on to what they can, or what they've had. Nona going to ult, and with the help of Cook, does take out the Kiriko on the Axolotl side. And you, the actual autos now at 90%. WCU really needs to get a big push on the point here. And with only beat to approach with, it's going to be a tough fight for WCU to win. But as we see Zero quickly developing that pulse bomb and that beat coming out from Western, it's going to be a big fight. Zero yeah, gets two quick picks. Yeah, two quick picks. It's slightly in favor. One pick there for the actual autos. WCU needing to cap this point. I mean, right now, though, the Axolotls have one ult online, two very close, and that ult's going to come in on point. And, I mean, right now, with only Zero's Pulse Bomb to go off of WCU, a little on their heels, trying to play a bit smarter and safer, there is going to be the one kill onto Megusaka, who can teleport back in pretty quick if they're careful or if they're smart about it. And two picks from WCU. They're going to keep getting closer and closer, looking to find that Mercy. They get it, and it's going to be all up to this Wrecking Ball to keep WCU from getting this point, and Wrecking Ball is going to pop, or just head off and head out. So Western now going to regain control 
last possible second. Yeah, that was a great fight there from the Mountaineers. An absolute must because if they didn't close that out, they would have lost game one here. But now they're going to have to keep it, essentially keep point to win this. So They have to keep point, and I'm going to expect about two or three team fights coming in for the rest of this first round. If, if, if WCU wins this one, we can guarantee at least one more, maybe two. It's a huge heal there coming from the Mercy on the Axolotl side of things. But there, three quick picks from WCU. It's going to be up to Wrecking Ball and... I believe that is Reaper on the Axolotl side. Yeah, that was a, I would almost say a waste of an ult there from uh, the Axolotl's tank. But just because so many of their players had already gone down, so. Well, and speaking of the tank, can we just talk about Nona going in and taking out those mines on his own? Yeah, WCU with three alts for this potentially last fight, depending on how long we play here so. we are in last fight territory depending on how long this fight lasts Ooh. i mean it's gonna be a quick pick on ultra cook as they ult or as there's another reaper ult nona's gonna find Vizante. nerf gonna find loose goose this is close this is a tight fight and if wcu isn't careful and doesn't get a couple of quick picks here that might be it the pulse bomb from zero gets shut down by hammy hammy then finds megusaka curse finds nona so W, it's this is it. This is the last fight of this, of at least this round in the game. Two Mountaineers on point have to survive. Ultra Cook gets taken out. It's all up to Loose Goose, who's gonna get taken out. Is WCU gonna get back in time? No, they will not. Unfortunate for WCU as the Axolotls take game one. Yeah, well played there from the Axolotls. But overall, that was a great first round battle from both teams and neither team really wanting to get taken out there so i will say i'm pretty excited to see how the rest of this series is going to go yeah as am i well we'll be back to the action right after this play of the game finishes up
Okay, and we're back here for game two. WCU falling in that first game, but we honestly a close fight from both teams, so. I mean, right now it's not looking like this is going to go into either team's favor. This hybrid map really going to decide for WCU how the rest of the series goes. Western going to be, I believe, defending first as UTRGV is going to have to attack and get as far as they can. We are on Blizzworld, the ban having been King's Row by the Axolotls. Right now, I think it's going to be very interesting to see how Zero does as Widowmaker and Megu as Brigitte. Brigitte. And we're going to see Hammy switching over to Junker Queen, the sec or the third tank, that's the word, <laughs> that we will see from Hammy this series as they were D.Va and Hammond, Wrecking Ball, last game. Kind of looks like the Axolotls are doing a split squad here, having two go right and two left, three going left there. You're going left, they're going to try and backline on this top area where it looks like and it's going to be a Reaper backlining on WCU. There's going to be an early Ibo field come out from WCU's Loose Goose. Cook gets found early, but Megusaka trading and finding the mercy on of the Axolotls. And just a close fight right now. Zero gets taken out by the Echo. And I mean, I think it's a close respawn for the Axolotls to get back into it. Nona gets found, Megusaka gets found, and that is going to be a team fight in favor of the axolotls and wcu now gonna back off let them just take the objective and play a bit more patiently yeah that was uh an, an impressive push honestly from the axolotls uh it's definitely one of the faster uh payload captures i've seen so far so let's see how wcu can respond to that i mean brigitte definitely an interesting choice on a map like this where I mean, from what I understand, Brigitte is one of those you have to get in their face and play essentially as a Reinhardt, but as a support character. I mean, Zero playing as Widowmaker is also an interesting choice on a place where there's not a lot of great sniping positions. You can't really get a clear angle for the entirety of the fight unless you get around this corner here, which they do. And Ultra gets a good pick onto the Cassidy of the Axolotls. Right now, WCU not doing the best, not having the best start to a hybrid map that I've ever seen, but they're not doing terrible. Yeah, no, it's uh, definitely a great start for them getting the payload, but since then, pretty decent push, but nothing too spectacular. Uh, as far as alts go, WCU definitely high on their alt levels. So, I mean, we did see rally and whatever the widowmaker ult is come out from wcu so it's going to be very interesting going into this third or into this next fight with just about three ults for each team but two of wcus being incredibly low as opposed to around 20 percent for the axolotls right now it's battle of the sigmas and they, there might be an approach of nona's sigma ult here in just a second from the mountaineers Zero sitting back, playing it safe. Uskus gets taken out fairly early into this fight, and Nona's gonna get found right after the only or two ults coming out now from the Axolotls, and that will be all of their ults burned. WCU still has three. Yeah, the Axolotls do have three on the cart though. WCU just trying to regroup before fighting, and there's a pick there. Unfortunate for the Mountaineers. Cook gets taken out and the Axolotl is going to completely uncontested get to the second or get to that checkpoint for almost or four minutes 40 seconds for them to get around this final corner of King's Row. And right now I think the main idea for the Mountaineers will be to stall as long as possible. That is all they can really do. They have four and a half minutes to defend this entire push which was one that they struggled against when they played at WCU Black. Yeah, absolutely. This is definitely uh, one of the choke points on this map, and it can be tough for either team, so let's see how WCU handles it. And right now we do see a quick trade coming from both teams. 
little bit of an advantage swinging in favor of the axolotls though as they get a huge push towards w or towards the end of this blizz world hybrid map just under four minutes to go and it's going to be three almost four ults from wcu and two closing in on four three closing in on four for UT or for the axolotls three ults now coming out from wcu our soldier ultra cook gets taken out very fast no one is going to find curse and all ults from wcu get popped they're not finding anyone Nona finds the mercy of the axolotls, but that's not going to do too much right now in this fight, as it is all on this payload. Ultra Cook does find Vizante, or Viznate. Nona finds Hammy, and that is going to push all of the axolotls off of the cart. Yeah, that was a well-needed win there from WCU, as they got within four meters of uh, capping that point, so definitely a good push from the axolotls. Oh. Ultra Cut going down. It does take nerf with them. It is going to be a four on four here. It's a battle of Sigmas for the moment. And it looks like all the heals are coming in from UTRGV in the back line. There is a rev from, from the Axolotls. Mercy on their Echo. And the Soldier Ult coming out from UT or from the Axolotls taking on Zero. Nerf finding Megusaka, Hammy finding Nona. Curse finding Loose Goose, and that is probably going to be it. That is the final fight we will see. Cook gets taken out last second by Curse, and WCU now has all of the pressure on them to get to that final checkpoint as fast as they possibly can. Yeah, the Axolotls finish that with 2 minutes and 16 seconds on the clock, reaching the third checkpoint, so WCU has their work cut out for them. But it's definitely doable. It's not out of the question. It's just a matter of how is WCU going to respond to what the Axolotls have come out with so far. The Axolotls being very strong in this game, too. And it was an interesting pick from the Mountaineers onto Blizzworld, a map that they, I think, might have been struggling with a bit so far this season. And they will, and they want, and they went in choosing it. And as we saw last night, this was not one of their better performances. That is true, but honestly, maps like this, uh, all it takes is different formations to make them successful, so we'll definitely see what WCU does this time. Well, in different formations, speaking of, we see Nona switching over to Reinhardt, Zero to Cassidy, and Ultra Cook to Symmetra. Hammy going back to Wrecking Ball, and that is the only main change on the Axolotls. So, very different team comp from WCU, and right now, it looks like the Axolotl is saying if it's not broken, they're not going to try and fix it. Yeah, I mean, after their success last time, I don't, I don't see why they would. I don't either. That symmetric teleport is huge for the Mountaineers. They're going to try and get up and get in as fast as they can. And it looks like the Axolotl is going to be holding that same high ground that WCU was holding earlier. Zero getting a pick onto the Mercy, a huge early pick off in this team fight. Hammy taking out Megusaka's immortality field. And right now, not looking like there's going to be too much of a different team fight. A little bit different as Ultra goes around back to try and take on the Wrecking Ball alone. And WCU going to get quickly pushed off of point by the Axolotls as everyone now on the Axolotls back in it. And right now, WCU losing this team fight. Three get taken out from Western. Cook and Loose Goose together now, just trying to hold off on point, trying to pick anyone off that they can. And that is going to be Loose Goose retreating on their own. Overall, is good attempt there from the Mountaineers. Uh, good push overall. They did get on point, started to get some... Uh, some ground on point essentially but uh just falling short in that battle there so oxlottles won that fight wcu looking to win this next one and right now wcu trying to push him on the side to try and get some damage lock one person off 
not able to do so. There is going to be the back window coming out. And there's going to be just the standard. And there comes Beat from Loose Goose as well. Ultra Cook now at Reaper Blossom. We will see the ult coming out from... Reaper Blossom does find the Mercy, but Curse takes out Ultra Cook right as they're about to find some others. Pretty even team fight right now. WC slightly in the lead. 3-2. It's going to be a revive, though, from the Mercy, uncontested once again. WCU just not sure about what to do with these Mercies coming in and getting those revives off. Yeah, WCU really needing to take care of this Mercy, because this Mercy is doing wonders for resing and healing their team. And this Wrecking Ball, too, just the combination of the two. Wrecking Ball having a ton of health as is. Nona gets a quick pick on the Curse. Is he going to be able to find anyone else? He's working on getting that Wrecking Ball, that Moira ult coming in, though being a little bit of a challenge. Moira ult does find Megusaka's immortality field. Zero finds the mercy. Another great pick from Zero. Will WCU be able to capitalize as Cook picks off the other healer and Zero gets the echo. Now this fight should go in favor of WCU if they can cap it. They get shut down just Ooh. millimeters from it. They do end up getting it, but there is going to be a the remnants of that Wrecking Ball ultimate on point. It's going to be the Wrecking Ball working alone to try and hold off WCU as the rest of the team comes in. High Noon pretty close to coming out from Western. You can only imagine as Zero needs to get as much or help as much as they can. And getting that quick push with that ultimate will be huge. There's the Immortality Field coming up from Megusaka. Gets taken out by Hammy. Zero falls. Megusaka falling now too for WCU. Nona looking like he's about to get taken out. He does. It's down to Ultra Cook and Luskus. Ultra Cook gets taken out and Luskus is going to try and just hide and retreat for a second here. As he just goes back to his team spawn. Yeah, definitely a team fight or a team win there for the Axolotls. WCU just needing to regroup. I mean, still 2 minutes and 40 seconds left on the clock, but looking at how quickly the Axolotls moved through those checkpoints. WCU is behind pace here. So we'll see what they can do. There's going to be a big beat pop from Loose Goose to enter this fight, helping with three kills. Zero, Nona, and Cook finding the Mercy, Moira, and the Soldier. It's down to Hammy and Nerf on again all both of those two just against WCU as a team. It's going to be a five on two for a moment as the rest of the Axolotls are looking to respawn and get back into the fray. Yeah, both teams are going to have three alts, actually four alts looking for the axolotls going into this next fight, so could be lots of alts being popped. We do see Megusaka's wall coming out. We see High Noon as well. And we see a quad kill. There's the team kill from Ultra Cook. Hammy's mines do find Megusaka. But a team kill from Ultra Cook will push WCU right up to this checkpoint and they are going to be knocking on the door of the axolotls trying to get to the trying to get all the way to the end but they're going to have a lot less time than they think as the axolotls start to come out in force and wcu i mean they're going to be behind even if they get to the end at this point because there's i don't see any feasible way that western's going to get there in 30 seconds no at this point wcu is honestly just trying to finish you know uh, as long as they get it on there they're gonna at least a minute back uh looking at this next fight though it could be a dangerous one with the axolotls having three alts coming up on four and wcu doesn't have any in their pockets they're using for that last fight I mean, they are coming up on one we do see nerf using that echo ult to switch over to sigma so now two sigmas on essentially on the axolotl side again with this mercy this Mercy just keeping the Axolotls in these fights. It's insane how much work they're doing. Two ults still online for the Axolotls. Just about two for the Mountaineers. It is going to be a Sigma ult for Western. Zero now switching over to Hanzo. Could make a world of difference here as Western is getting in around this corner. is going to find Hammy. Curse is going to find Nona. Both teams now out there. Tanks. Ultra Cook finding Nerf. WCU now leading this fight 2-1. to 3-1 to one as they pick off the Mercy as well. 
So now Western getting around this corner a full minute behind the Axolotls. And the Axolotls now going to have one big push coming out against Western to try and end this game right here and right now. Western trying to get this payload to the finish. And a good pick there from Nona taking out the Axolotls tank Sigma there. WCE in favor of winning this fight. And that Moira ult doing a lot against Nona. Nona does take out the Zante, and WCU is going to finish it with a minute exactly. Two minutes, 20 seconds on the clock for the Axolotls to get that capture and then move as far as they can. That is, this is going to be a tight one. That it is. Definitely a good matchup between these two teams. Uh, lots of vaults coming online, which means lots of good fighting happening. Um... Definitely the Oxlottles with that minute 20 extra of time, so clearly in their favor, but nonetheless, well played from both teams. I mean, right now, I think the biggest thing that WCU can do is just get whatever champion or whatever heroes, I guess, is Overwatch. Heroes, champions, characters. <laughs> getting whoever each person feels as confident as they can with as they are going to be the first ones to try and capture point it looks like yeah honestly with only a minute wcu is really gonna need to get on this point uh they're gonna if, need to get on fast and they're gonna need to get on strong yeah if they're unable to capture this point it it would be very difficult to hold out the axolotl so it doesn't seem like much, but a minute 20 in this circumstance is an eternity. There's going to be a symmetric teleport to the side. WCU going to look to go around the, to the left before going up. Megusaka gets picked off super early by the opposing Echo. So now only 45 seconds off, and WCU now down in Anna, an imperative healer in this fight. Clean, definitely a unique strategy. WCU with only 30 seconds now as they uh, finally breach that main entrance. And I've also got to wonder, is WCU going to be smart enough this time to focus on point as opposed to just leaving it like they have in previous weeks? Nona now pushing a bit too far forward. Overextends is on his own. No room for his healers to catch up. Cook gets picked off in that fight, and he's going to be on his own trying to get back. Seven seconds for the Mountaineers to get a touch on point, and are they even going to go for it? No, three, two, they are holed up in that wall. Nona going to go in to try and get a touch on point. Is he going to get it? Yes, there's going to be a, this is going to be a team fight here that decides if WCU can get this point or not. Luskas gets taken out. Nona very close to falling out of their mech suit. Cook gets taken out now. Nona gets taken out, and... It's up to Megusaka now, all alone for Western, and that's not going to be enough overtime. And that'll be it. Western has to hold off here. Yeah, for 2 minutes and 20 seconds, so we will see what WCU can do. I mean, off of the push of the first round, they'll definitely be able to do it, but it's just how well is Western going to do this? I think right now what we're probably going to end up seeing from the Axolotls is going to be Hammy going back to that Wrecking Ball. That just seems to be an unstoppable force, especially with Dr. Unicorn on Mercy. The combination of the two just cannot seem to be stopped. Western going to be Sigma, Widowmaker, Soldier, Baptiste, and Zenyatta against a Sigma, Echo, Ash, Mercy, Baptiste from the axolotls yeah we'll see what the axolotls do here with their push last time they uh, sent two down low to the right as the other three uh kind of stormed up to the left up the staircase and getting in wc's back line definitely well uh, thought out and planned play we'll see if a they do the same thing and b if wcu will be able to figure out how to manage that a little better this time I mean, overall, in terms of what we're looking for right now, the way that Western managed it the first time around would work, but maybe not quite to the level that they need it to. Yeah, WCU looking like they're going to play the back line rather than the front line play, so 
interesting choice here from the Mountaineers. We did see a team do this uh, last night successfully against Mountaineers, so we will see where it goes from here. It looked like that Zero was supposed to be trying to get a couple of early picks onto the Axolotls. And, it, and Nerf gets taken out by Nona. Curse finds Loose Goose. Zero finds Docto. A huge pick for the Mountaineers. There's going to be three kills from the Western I as Hemi gets a pick on the Ultra. Yeah, WC looking good in this first fight. It's going to be tough for the Axolotls to kind of regroup. I feel like they're going to be stagger killed, but... See, yeah, WCU just taking out the tank late game there. So the Oxalotls down to a minute 30. You're gonna have to regroup and recover. I mean, right now there's two of the Oxalotls on their own there in the staircase up by that cart. A minute 20 for the Oxalotls as WCU now back at full health. And I wonder how they're gonna try and push this one. Western very close to a couple of key ults. And we do see a change from Hammy over to Winston. Nerf gets a pick onto Zero. A huge pick off from the Axolotls. And now there's going to be a pick onto Ash from Nona. It's a four on... Ooh, four on three. And that might actually do it. I think the Axolotls will take it here. As they're going to have a com almost completely uncontested push on the point. And UTRGV gets the game two because of it. That they do, going up 2-0 now in this series of uh, best of five, so WCU is going to have to have a reverse sweep if they look to win tonight. If they look to win tonight and put themselves into a position to where they will be able to make playoffs. Right now, both teams have a very difficult remainder of the season, and this is a competition for who's going to be in, I believe, eighth place right now. Yeah, so definitely a lot on the line. Uh, still a couple more games after this, but tough schedules either way. So we'll see what WCU can do. We're going to take a break here, and we will be back to the action in just a little bit.
welcome back to game three in this best of five series as Western Colorado University Crimson Overwatch takes on the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley Axolotls. We are on circuit. Yeah, and WCU currently down 2-0 in this series. This is a best of five series, so if the Mountaineers can't win this map, that will be it. I mean, a lot on the line here, and Absolutely. WCU attacking first. Yeah, this is uh, even like playoff contention here on the line, because uh, if WCU falls here, that should put them in ninth place, I believe, and top eight make playoffs. Still a couple more games to come, so still will be hope, but nonetheless, wins always help. So Anyone can help, and right now it looks like both teams will have a difficult schedule for the remainder of the season. So a win tonight could very well decide between these two teams who makes it to the playoffs. Yeah, we have uh, WCU on the attack here. So we've got 12 seconds until we are underway. I mean, no swaps and no subs coming from WCU and UTRGV. I mean, a change of pace could help, but we're not entirely sure, especially with the lineup and chemistry that WCU has with this lineup. No one are going to stay as Sigma. Zero going to be Widowmaker once again. I think that Widowmaker on this map, especially on attack, is a little bit of a more aggressive choice and a bit of a daring one. That it could be. We have seen... We actually uh, saw we're playing Widow last night on this map and was dominating with headshot. so we will see if that's the case tonight. I think that last night Zero was playing Widow on defense, not on offense, mm. as Zero ends up getting picked off by Nerf. Curse finds Ultra. So WCU down both DPS. As we see Nona trying to chase down the opposing Echo. Zero does switch back to Hanzo. And Ultra gonna try and get some damage on the back from flying or flying up as Echo. Right now, only two kills so far in this game, both of which on WCU's DPS. Nona getting saved by Loose Goose. Zero gets a pick onto Nerf. And Nerf being one of the banes of WCU's existence for the moment. Zero also gets Dr. Unicorn. Curse finds Megusaka, one of WCU's healers. Nona does find the opposing tank, though. And that's going to push the Ash. And. Ooh, Ash gets Ultra Cook. A good on the pick retreat. there from the Oxlottles, but nonetheless, WCU will win that fight as they begin to push cart. WCU with two on the cart currently. Zero gets another pick on the nerf. Right now, it looks like Zero is just trying to get that Echo out of the play, <laughs> which I can't blame her. Neither can I. Here comes an ammo field out from Loose Goose. Loose Goose does get taken out by Hammy. Hammy then finds the ammo field. Right now, Western is trying to find any picks that they can to get this cart as far as possible. I think they know what's on the line here with this game and with this map especially. And Ultra Cook gets taken out by Ash's Bomb there. Hammy picks off Megusaka. Zero gets taken out by Nerf. Axolotls are on the attack, and they're going to win this fight as WCU begins to back off now. They begin to back off, but they can't quite get back in time. Coming up on a minute 15 left on the clock here. Right now, WCU and the Axolotls both at about the same in terms of ultimates. Axolotls slightly behind as their Ash is the only is still behind in terms of the or is only at was is only at 60 as opposed to Ultra Cook just getting their ult. WCU's Nona popping the Sigma ult and not able to find anyone. Bizante finding Loose Goose's ammo field. Loose Goose now gets picked off by Nerf. Nerf then finds Zero. I mean, Western with four olds, but they only have 30 seconds to get onto the point to keep pushing it to the next checkpoint. WCU getting a pick there, and they're going to be pushing hard now in this 5v4 with four alts going into this 
potentially last fight for them if they can't get on this card. We are, in fact, in last <laughs> fight territory once again. We do see Ultra Cook using their ult to turn into Sigma for a bit here. So two Sigmas on WCU side. This could be the difference. Zero popping their ult as well. Huge push from Western now as they know they need in this in the dying seconds of this fight to cross that line. It's just a matter of are they actually going to stay on the point this time? An issue that they've been having for the past few weeks. Yeah, WCU still staying alive for now and getting... Well, as we say that, Nono gets picked off and WCU needs to get the touch. Are they going to get anyone there in time? They will to barely get there in time, but I don't know if that's going to be enough. It's just, it was up to Mangusaka there in Ultra Cook and Ultra Cook gets picked off. WCU just spawning now and not going to get back in time to get to that first checkpoint. So all Axolotls have to do to win this series is get past that corner. It's gonna be interesting to see who the Axolotls play and who the Mountaineers play in terms of their characters. I think Zero here might actually go over to Widowmaker once again. I think Nona gonna probably stick with Sigma just because of the corners and the ability to bounce the shots. I don't know who Ultra's gonna go. Ultra's gonna go back to Echo. Zero actually gonna be Hanzo. Luskus gonna switch over to the Mercy, trying to match Docta's Mercy. And Megusaka and Vizante gonna be both both gonna be Va Baptiste here. So the only difference is one DPS, Zero being a being a Hanzo, Curse being an Ash. And Western gonna post up over at this cafe here, sitting around the corner, gonna let the Axolotls approach. Not necessarily sure, I think that that's the right move for WCU. I think they need to start out more aggressive in this round. Namely, because they, I mean, this is, this could possibly be it. That it could be. Uh, definitely, the way the Axolotls have been playing, they have been moving the carts well, and we're honestly just going to have to see WCU winning more of these fights, kind of working more as a team, calling out their targets, so we'll see what WCU does here. Well, first we see Zero get taken out by Nerf once again. I think Nerf and Zero just kind of have it out for each other. Luskus almost dies, gets saved by the Baptiste Immo field. And Zero now back alive, trying to get back into the fray. Now Axolotl's already past halfway to where they need to get to close out this game. That is four kills on WCU. It is all on Zero now as the Axolotl's almost at where they need to be. Zero posting up a bit too far behind. Is WCU going to get there in time? It's gonna, looks like Cook is going to be there as Tracer just a touch on point. 2.8 meters for the Axolotl's to go. They have two minutes to do so. Nona being Doomfist for the bit, for the moment. Ultra Cook does get taken down by Nerf. Nona stays or stunned for a second. Vizante finds Megusaka's Immo field. Luskus gets taken out by Hammy. Nona gonna fall down to Curse. It's gonna be up to Zero and That's it. That is w it. WCU falling 3-0 to the UTRGV Axolotls. Overall, a pretty great competition tonight. Very close for the first couple games, just in that last one. The Axolotls just really use the momentum and that carry them through from one game to the next. Yeah, definitely well played from both teams there. The Axolotls just able to move the car, capture points faster than the Mountaineers, so that will do it for them there. Uh, Axolotls will move up in the leaderboard, uh, just bumping WCU slightly out of contention, but still... I believe two games left for them, so we'll see what they can do wrapping up this season. We'll have to wait and see, but for now, I'm JoJo's Mojo. And I'm Mountain Man. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great night.